Well, I'm glad you asked that question, Anthony, because I actually serve kind of as your microphone in the post-game press conference. I asked Coach Beheim, you know, why can't you guys close out these close games against good teams? The loss to Miami eight days ago by four points, the same thing happened again here tonight. He did not like that. He stormed out of the press conference. He decided the press conference was over at that point. But hey, SU had its chances to win this game. Joe Girard III hit a three from right behind me here to put Syracuse in front by two. It's first lead in the second half since the very early part of that second frame. From there, SU just needed a stop defensively. They didn't get one. Pete Nance went to the free throw line, split the pair. On the second miss, Joe Girard rebounded the basketball, kept it in play, threw it right under SU's basket, and Nance dunked it home. That was the game-winning basket, and SU had some other miscues down the stretch, like an offensive foul that plagued SU. So I chalk it up to two things, mental lapses today and miscues for Syracuse in this loss. Yeah, John, you know, there have been so many tough losses for this Syracuse team, especially in the recent going, you know, but did you get the sense that this one hurt more than some of the other ones? Let me give you a compliment because that was an excellent question. I toiled with this one for at least 10 minutes because there's been so many close games this year, so many pivotal games this year for Syracuse where if they win it, we're talking about a different SU basketball team. But the fact of the matter is SU just continues to lose. The close loss to Miami, as I already mentioned, that's the one I was initially thinking of picking, but I'm actually going to go with this loss here tonight. Maybe it's recency bias, but look, I already mentioned it. SU was up by two, under a minute to go in the game. All you need is one defensive stop, maybe a couple of free throws down the stretch to win. SU just did not get the job done. And this was the beginning of a pivotal stretch in Syracuse's January schedule. UNC tonight, now you go on the road to Virginia Tech, and you finish up with a ranked Virginia team right here in the Dome. That's opportunities for at least three quad two wins. That UVA game is definitely a quad one opportunity for Syracuse. So it doesn't get off to a great start. You had the game won tonight. You just couldn't finish down the stretch. Thanks, John. Another question for you. We saw Jesse pick up his fourth foul with just over 13 minutes to go. Can you kind of walk me through what was Jim's process in bringing him back into the game just six minutes later with four fouls, knowing very well he was going up against a very physical opponent in Armando Baycott? Well, Coach Beheim had to put Jesse Edwards back in the game. He had four fouls. He was in foul trouble basically the entire night. He didn't play for long stretches of time, which forced Munir Hima to take his place. He's kind of been playing backup duty to Jesse Edwards all year, the Duquesne transfer. He's looked good, but he just doesn't have the offensive spark that Edwards has. So in this game where it was so close, it was going back and forth. And by the way, Armando Baycott, UNC starting center, was in foul trouble as well. He had to go back in the game to go punch for punch with Baycott with Pete Nance because if not, Syracuse had to score and rely on its shooting from the exterior. If Chris Bell doesn't go for 15 points in this game with three triples, SU loses by at least 10. So they had to get Edwards back in the game to get that interior scoring back and really just stay in this game at all. So Jesse Edwards really showing how thin this front court unit is for Syracuse. So thank you so much, John, and I hope you are, your feelings aren't hurt after Jim Beheim stormed, stormed off the podium with your question. But let's figure out how Syracuse